Hey everyone, welcome back to the Prime 5, your five biggest news stories in the last 24 hours revolving around Nintendo. Typically, we'll slip in a few other major platform stories when relevant. But yeah, we have a packed show for you today, so go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy this content, so you can get more of it Monday through Friday, plus bonus videos on weekends as well. But I don't want to waste any more of your time this morning, because we need to get right into the news. Now our first story is a little bit of an update on the Nintendo Direct rumors that we've been covering. Just a small one, we're not going to say a whole lot here, but Max Williams out on Twitter asked Nate the Hate about Breath of the Wild 2 coming to this thing, coming to the Direct that's supposedly happening this month. Again, it's all just rumors at this point. And, well, he told Max Williams, yeah, he thinks that uh, Breath of the Wild 2 will be at the Direct. Or, let me give the exact terms, because this isn't based on his sources. He simply said... Odds favor, yes, Breath of the Wild 2 will be at the Direct. Now, again, this is just a prediction. This is not to be taken as a fact, but you know me. Any excuse to bring up Breath of the Wild 2 is a good excuse to me. Let's get into our next story. Now, this next one also comes from Nate the Hate a bit and also somebody else. We're going to talk about the new Switch hardware just for a brief moment. So just hold on for a moment. I get it. You might not want to hear about it, but this is going to be really, really quick. So let's just let's just get to it. So, according to Zomble, who was quoting the Chinese leaker that previously gave us the backplate for the Switch Lite, verified it was the real backplate for Switch Lite before Switch Lite came out, has stated that the backplate for the new uh, system coming from Nintendo, the more powerful Switch, just has the Nintendo Switch logo on it. There's no Pro listed on it, too, or any other moniker suggesting that whatever this platform is that's supposedly coming next year is going to be of the same ilk of the current Switch, as in it's not a new generation device. It's actually a mid-gen upgrade. Now, quoting this post, Nate the Hate had this to say, for clarity... I know of exclusives, yes, but I also know of games that are coming to the Switch OG, so the original Switch, but have builds on the Switch 4K DLSS dev kits. These games, since they are releasing on the Switch OG, are planned by first half of 2023, regardless of Switch 4K hardware release timing. So even if the 4K Switch supposedly doesn't come out early next year, he knows of games coming anyways. So I don't know. This is just stuff to take with a grain of salt. This is all rumors. This is all, call it whatever you want to call it. Call it fake news. I really don't care. I just enjoy talking about it. I brought it to you. Let's get into our first real story of the day. And our first big story, or real story of the day, our sales data, hard sales data coming from Famitsu for Japan of last week. And PlayStation actually did pretty well in the software charts. But let's actually just dive right into the numbers and show you guys. So right now we have the Nintendo Switch itself is still the best-selling system in Japan with 113,530 units. The crazy part is 87,000 of those units are the Switch OLED. It's very clear, especially in Japan, OLED is that lead platform. PlayStation 5 hit 25,000 in sales. It was a pretty solid week for PlayStation 5 and a really good week relative for Xbox because the Xbox series of systems hit 17,000 with 10,000 of those being the Series X and 6 to 7,000 being the Series S. Now we get into the software sales here and we're just going to go over the top 10. We have Earth Defense Force 6 at number 1. We have SD Gundam Battle Alliance at number 2. Now Earth Defense Force 6 is actually a PlayStation 4 game at number 1. Uh, Soul Hackers 2 is at number 3. That's another PS4 game. Earth Defense Force 6, the PS5 version, at number 4. Soul Hackers 2 for PS5 is at number 5. See, it's really those two games dominating. But PlayStation 4 wasn't done yet. At number 6, SD Gundam Battle Alliance for PlayStation 4 is there. Then we get to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at 7. Nintendo Switch Sports at 8. But then another PlayStation game pops up there in Saints Row for PS4 at number 9. And then SD Gundam Battle Alliance for PS5 at number 10. So for the first time in what seems like forever, games for PlayStation platforms owned more of the top 10 than Nintendo Switch. Now, does this mean the tides are turning in Japan? Well, no. There was a couple new releases. That's really Really what really pushed things and those new releases pushed playstation sales which put sales of more playstation games whereas switch had nothing big and exciting coming out so i don't really think this means much remember it was just a week ago nintendo owned the entire top 30 but hey this is just japan who knows for the rest of the world Let's get into our next story. Now, do you guys remember the game Biomutant? It already came out on other platforms and has, you know, so-so reviews, usually in the high 60s. 
yeah, the user reviews are a little bit better, usually in the mid sevens. People seem to kind of enjoy it. It has really, really interesting mechanics. The battle mechanics in particular seem to be really out there and really crazy and fun. But some of the RPG elements didn't always click with people. But hey, you know what? It was a first attempt at a new IP. Maybe a Biomutant 2 would actually be worth doing if this sells well enough. Well, the game's supposedly coming to Switch, and it we have a leak from a Portuguese retailer suggesting that it's coming out on October 25th, and we'll have a physical version, so that means it should actually be playable locally on Switch, not some sort of streamed version. So that's interesting. Obviously, the dates at retailers don't always mean that much, but the fact that a physical version is up and you can pre-order and spend money on it now suggests that, yes, Biomutant's coming to Switch this year, likely in October, maybe on the 25th, but if not the 25th, some other date. October's already pretty packed for Nintendo, but you know what? Hey, for people looking for something a little bit different, maybe this will be that game that falls right up your alley. And our last story of the day deals with Tokyo Game Show because one of Nintendo's major partners, Square Enix, is going to be a Tokyo Game Show, and they released the game list of all the games they're going to feature during the event. Now, Tokyo Game Show begins on the 15th, but Nintendo is not participating, even though Nintendo is always active behind the scenes with meetings. That being said, let's get to this giant game list because there's a few titles in here I'm really excited to see. Now, the very first title that Square Enix announces is happening is Forspoken. I think just in general, I'm really excited for that game. I know it's a PlayStation 5 or PlayStation exclusive. I can't remember if it's coming to PS4, but either way, I'm really excited for Forspoken. And I know it was delayed to next year. Doesn't change how excited I am. Next up, we have Valkyria Elysium, and we have Star Ocean 6, The Divine Force, Romancing Saga, Minstrel Song Remastered, The Diofield Chronicle, Near Automata, End of the Aurora Edition, Harvest Stella. That's notable because that's actually a Switch exclusive. We talked about a PlayStation exclusive with Forspoken. Well, they also got the Switch exclusive there in Harvest Stella that Nintendo did a treehouse on, so we get to see more of that. We have Tactics Ogre Reborn, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion, Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, Dragon Quest Treasures, Dragon Quest X Offline, Dragon Quest X Online, Infinity Strash Dragon Quest The Adventure of Day, Final Fantasy XIV Update, Power Wash Simulator, some people are really into that one. Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, and War of the Visions, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. So lots of Final Fantasy stuff, lots of Dragon Quest. Those are obviously two really big IPs. The ones I'm more excited about, those actually Forspoken and Harvest Stella. Those are the two that I can't wait to see the new footage on, see the new interviews about, and just get more information on these games because I want more information legitimately on both of them. Forspoken because I will have a PlayStation 5 before it comes out and Harvestella because I already own a Switch and I really am into that that sort of old school RPG slash farming simulator kind of combo game. You guys know what we're talking about with the old Harvest Moons, but now it's really like the story of Seasons Crew and we have Rune Factory. So this is just another one of those games and I'm pretty excited for it. It looked really, really good at the Nintendo Treehouse. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Rubble Jance from Nintendo Prime. That was today's Prime Five. I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your week, and I'm going to catch each and every single one of you in the next video.